Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Miss Robinson and I'm back with another math video for everyone. So today we are in chapter three and we are going to specifically be looking at a problem solving lesson and we're gonna learn how drawing a diagram is gonna help us solve a real world problem. A lot of times in math, we need to use real world situations. Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. My name is Miss Robinson and I'm back with another math video for everyone. Today we are looking at a lesson from chapter three and in chapter three on this particular lesson, it is technically a problem solving lesson. And in each of our problem solving lessons, we have a strategy that we're focusing on. And in this particular lesson, our strategy is using a diagram. Now the type of diagram that we are going to use is called a bar model. So what's nice about math is you can apply what you learn in math to real life situations. And so you're going to use math from here on out and for the rest of your life. So just when you think, why am I learning this? I promise you it's going to pop up and you'll be able to use it at some point in your life, whether it's this year, next year, or even when you're an adult. So we're going to be looking at some real world situations in this particular lesson. And then we are going to be focusing on drawing a diagram. And in this case, that diagram is called a bar model and learning how we can use that bar model to help us solve these real world situations that we find ourselves in. So we're going to take some information that we know and that has been given to us from our problem. And we're going to use that information to find out what we don't know or what we've been asked to find out. So as always, I'm going to take a pause here. I'm going to flip the camera around, give you some examples and then come back and close out the video. So hang tight. first example and let's come up with a real world situation in which a bar diagram might be helpful. So let's say I, Miss Robinson, I have three groups of students and they are taking a dance class from me. And in each of those dance classes, I have exactly eight students and I want to buy them a gift to celebrate the end of our dance class or our time together, but I don't know how many gifts in all I need to buy. So I would tell myself, okay, maybe I can figure this out by using a bar model. I know that I have three groups. This is group one, group two, group three. And I know that in each of those groups or in each of those classes, I have eight students. So that's group one with eight students, group two with eight students, and group three with eight students. Then I'm gonna ask myself, okay, well, if I have three groups or three classes of students and each of my classes has eight and I'm adding eight to itself, so eight is the first class plus another eight is the second class plus another eight is the third class, I should recognize that A, I'm using repeated addition. I'm adding eight to itself a total of three times. I should also use what I know about my factors and multiplication to be able to write a multiplication sentence. I know that the first factor represents how many groups, and in this case, I have three groups, and that the second factor represents how many I have in each group, and I know there's eight in each group, and those would be the numbers that I would be multiplying. So I can do a couple of things. First, I can skip count eight plus another eight is gonna be nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That takes care of group one and group two, but I need to also include group three. I stopped at 16 there, so I'm gonna keep counting with eight, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So that tells me, looking at my bar model with my three groups or three classes of eight students each, and using the factors three times four, I know that I would need to buy 24 gifts, okay? So that's pretty easy, right? Now let's look at another example. All right, now let's look at this example. Notice that in this example, my bar model is a little bit different. There's only two sections. This is section one and section two. And let's talk about what this bar model represents. Let's say in this real world example, let's say I have 12 students in my class. And with these 12 students, we decide we're gonna start a band. And that seven of those 12 students each decide or are assigned to make a drum for our band. 
that's those seven students there. And then the rest of the students, which would be five left, because seven plus five is 12, the five remaining students have been told, you're gonna make two shakers each. This would be the bar model to represent what I've just said to you guys. So I know that this section represents the drum makers. These seven students are going to be making drums. And then these five students are the shaker makers. And that those two pieces together represent my 12 students. Now, I haven't answered the question though. The question then is, well, if you have seven students making drums and your five remaining students have been told to make two shakers each, how many shakers are you gonna need to make in total? So now I need to think about, well now what do I do? So I know what these seven students are doing, but I really need to think about these five students and I'm gonna create a separate bar model for that. So let me erase this. And then let me set up a bar diagram and I know in the, or this bar model, excuse me, and I know in this bar model, I need to represent these five students that have been assigned to make shaker makers. So there's my bar, I need five sections, two, three, four, five, and I'm gonna do my best to make sure that they're even, but I know they're not perfect right now. And I said that each of those five students need to make two shakers each. So this is student number one, he or she is making two shakers. Student number two, he or she is making two shakers. Student number three, two shakers, student number four, two shakers, and student number five, two shakers. So there's my bar model representing those five students who were told to make two shakers each. So now I need to look at this diagram and figure out, well, what do I do with this? How do I come up with the final answer? How do I know how many shakers in all are going to be made? Again, you should recognize, you can skip count by twos, two, four, six, eight, 10. You should also recognize, in addition to that, that you are repeatedly adding two to itself. Two plus two plus two plus two plus two. And once you recognize that you are adding two to itself multiple times, you can come up with a multiplication sentence. So when I'm writing my multiplication sentence, my first question is, how many equal groups do I have? Because that is gonna be my first factor. I have one, two, three, four, five equal groups. So my first factor is going to be five. My second factor is going to be, well, how many are there in each group? Right now, these five groups represent five students and each of those five students are making two shakers. So there's going to be a two. They're going to make two shakers each. That will be my second factor, two. And I know I'm gonna use multiplication because multiplication is a shortcut to repeated addition. So my multiplication sentence would be five times two. If I don't know what five times two is, I can use my strategy of uh, skip counting or adding two to itself. Two plus two is four, okay? Four plus two is six. Six plus two is eight. And eight plus another two is 10. So that tells me that the product of five times two is going to equal 10. So there will be a total of 10 shakers in all that are made. So those are my two examples of bar models. I'm gonna come right back and then I'm gonna give you my closing thoughts for this video today. Okay, so those were your two examples using real world problems and then using the diagram, a bar model to help us solve them. Remember, we took what was known to us to help us figure out the unknown. So first things first, just making sure that you understand what is your problem asking you for? What are you solving for? At the very end of the problem, what should you be able to do? And then always keeping in mind, am I being told about equal groups? And if so, how many equal groups, and that will tell you how many sections you wanna have in your bar model. And then in those equal groups, how many are there? Whatever the case may be in terms of what you're dealing with. So in our last example, there were five equal groups and those equal groups were represented by five students. And each of those five students were told, make two shakers each for this band that we're setting up. So their equal groups were 
made up of two shakers. So your bar model is just, again, a nice visual representation, another way to solve a multiplication problem. And for parents, I know this one is a little bit different and it may not be something you're used to seeing. So if you're watching this with your child, just give it a chance. Some kids actually like it and some kids actually find it helpful. But this is just a strategy that you need to be familiar with. So that is it. I hope you guys found this useful. If so, give this video a thumbs up and I'll keep on going with making them. Otherwise, I will talk to you guys in the next one. I hope you all have a great, great day. Bye everyone.